Hey guys, for our writing lab today, um, I'm gonna have you guys talk a little bit about um, the the next two chapters of Blind Spot. But before we do that, um, wanted to go over our prompt and just give a little tour of what that looks like um, and the different kinds of documents that are attached to this and different resources that you can use as well. So hopefully you're in our week three. Um, I am going to go ahead and make these smaller so I don't get confused. I started um, using indents so it's a little easier to find information. Um, additionally, I'm posting, it's actually uploading right now. 1% um, processed, very good. Uh, but I'm gonna be posting um, a Prezi that is completely optional um, about just their course policies because I had a couple people um, email me over the weekend just about like work they forgot to turn in or um, or like just concerns about attendance or things like that. And so um, it's, since it's on the syllabus, but I didn't go over it on the first day, that's where you can find that stuff. I'll be putting it up with general information, but again, that's optional. Um, you're welcome to sort of scroll through or skim through the video to find the area that maybe you do have questions about. But of course you can email me as well. Um, so lots of new stuff on week three. Of course, we have our double entry journal. You guys are gonna get comments back um, tomorrow for the one from last week. Should have done that earlier, but um, but I will. I'm gonna make sure that that's that's back soon, so you know uh, what what maybe needs to be added or changed. Um, but um, I'm, I read through a couple of them, and I'm they're very engrossing to read. You guys have lots of good ideas. Your good vibes board is up, um, and also a place for you to submit your rough draft outline, which is gonna be this Sunday. Underneath that, have all of these different documents and resources. A um, couple of these are readings that are part of the assignment, um, and some of them are just resources you can use. This guy is the prompt. Um, I may actually add prompt to it so that you guys know. Um, so I have that open right here, and let's talk a little bit about this prompt. So first of all, um, don't be freaked out that it's three pages. So I write pretty long prompts just because they have a lot of different pieces of information on them. Um, but first and foremost, it's a four to five page paper. That's a tiny baby. Um, and you have a, a lot of different a lot of different tasks that need to squish into this paper. Um, and so we're going to talk about how to go about doing this on, during Wednesday's um, uh, writing lab. So for now, just sort of read through this, get some ideas. You could take some notes if you want, but um, we're really slowly constructing this paper. The final draft isn't due until um, not this Sunday, but the next. You can see the due dates here. Um, there's just a couple like uh, sort of pre-writing or, um, or drafting stuff, the Oreo draft, which we'll be talking about Oreo on Wednesday as well. Oreo is, is my one of my favorite things to do to a, to a paper because it helps me structure a lot. You have that rough draft. We'll talk on Wednesday about what I'm looking for in that rough draft. Next week, Rewriting Lab 4.1 is going to all be about peer editing and how to polish a paper. And then you're going to get comments back from me and on uh, on Wednesday, construct a revision memo, taking my notes um, and, and like sort of creating a game plan of like, cool, I now have an idea of how she's going to grade this. How can I start to bring these comments in? During uh, either of these weeks, you are welcome to um, to schedule office hours with me to go over uh, any of your writing at any point in the writing process. Uh, just text me or email me and we'll figure out a time. That could be over the phone or that could be over um, Google Meet or that could just be you know, something audio. It doesn't, something else you use, that's fine. Um, so our assignment is on unpacking privilege uh, where we are gonna go back to that idea we discussed last Wednesday, or I guess oh, it, wasn't, it was Friday. Last week was a hard week <laughs> um, on Friday um, of, of, uh, of the definition of privilege. And so I'm gonna sort of skim over the description. Um, this just sort of gives a, gives a primer on what we've been talking about, how everybody has these hidden biases. Um, some of it is just the way that our brain works with these mind bugs. Um, it, and it also is the way that we identify and label ourself. Um, a lot of our privileges come from the ways that we uh, we self-identify. So for me, like, oh, I am you know white. I have blonde hair. I was raised middle class. I have um, uh, graduate degrees. I um, 
and have am a cat owner. Like all of all of these ways that we label ourselves individually um, can also indicate where our privileges are, um, and also cultural messages. And this is going to be a fun one that we'll talk about. Um, I think in our our third paper where we're going to go out and look at the way that media constructs arguments and start to just find all of like the really terrible arguments that they make. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so. Our brains fail to see how these are our own privileges. Um, it's, we have to kind of discover them and, and identify them. Um, but the way to do that is by taking inventory of the lenses that we use to survey the world around us. Um, <clears throat> and you guys will read about automatic versus reflective preferences. So I would say if there's anything that makes you feel a little less uh, of a horrible person <laughs> after reading um, the first four, um, four chapters of Blind Spot, it's, it's these terms, automatic and reflective. It's kind of like, a oh, cool. Inside you're racist or inside you're sexist, but like, but really you, like that's some sort of deep, deep thing and you yourself are, are not. So it's, <clears throat> I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys write about in your DEJs on that. So what you'll be doing in this assignment, <clears throat> excuse me, you guys are going to create an extended definition of the term privilege. Um, and so you're going to use blind spot to sort of help us understand this uh, throughout your 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 explanation of the definition. But um, more so, you'll you'll get a lot of uh, your content from our text. And I'm going to scroll down here. So you do not have to use all of these. You uh, you do, however, I would like to see you incorporating blind spot. That one is the mandatory one. Um, past that, though, you have four other options. So two are the ones, the text that we used last Friday. So if you really liked this TED Talk or really liked this piece by Roxane Gay, both of them um, definitely gave their perspectives on privilege. Um, and then there's also these other two that you, um, I recommend that you read because they're tremendously helpful. Um, and especially if you're like, oh, these were kind of boring. Um, I wanted to give you some other options. I especially, I'm just going to move to show you those ones. Um, this is a piece from the New York uh, Magazine written by Claudia Rankine, who we are going to read a little bit of her stuff later. <clears throat> and even though it's, it's, um, it's like, it's less than, it says eight pages, but it's not eight complete pages. Um, it's very personal. It's a very quick read. It's all from her own personal perspective. And it's all about privilege within the college classroom, which is uh, why I think it resonates a lot with me. And I know it, it resonates with um, a lot of students who've read it. Um, and it, it gives some, some really good just examples of how privilege plays out in, in a setting. Whereas um, maybe, you know, Jana's the TED Talk was very personal to her. This is, I think, is a little more familiar to us. And then if you like more theory, this is a great text that uh, I had to rip this out of a book <laughs> and scan it. Um, but it's talking about stuff more um, from like a sociological standpoint um, and explains uh, a lot of terminology that I've used a little bit and will continue to use. So it's worth it just even to go through and like find these definitions. And um, oh, I messed up that guy a little bit um, and, and learn how to use them correctly because they will be coming up more later. So definitely recommend this reads pretty quickly um, as well. And they have these key terms at the back which I think are really great. So a lot of what I'm looking for in this paper is a familiarity with the language. So being able to take language um, that's used in these other texts and then um, use them to make you sound authoritative. And that means reading and understanding these texts. So if you do have any questions about stuff that you've read tomorrow at 12.30, 12, or was it 12? 12.30 to 1.30 or 12 to 1? 12.30, excuse me, 12.30 to 1.30, um, I'm hosting our first book club. So if there's anything that you've read that you're confused about or you, you thought was interesting and you want to talk about it or you just want to see a face, um, feel free to chime in. I'm going to be posting that link um, either later tonight or in the morning. I have to make sure that I uh, am able to bring multiple people in so it's not just me and you and everybody else is shut out. Um, <clears throat> so those are two texts that you guys will use to create this definition, and that will be your, uh, your thesis statement. And then throughout the paper, you're going to use these same texts you chose. So let's say you choose um, this one by Claudia Rankine, and then you also chose Roxane Gay. Um, you're going to use both of their arguments to help justify why you chose that definition. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
and explain it with clear reasons, evidence drawn from those texts. And then um, sort of the, one of the last things you'll do, and this is the only place that you're going to be using third person or using first person, excuse me, is to craft an extended example of an instance when you recognized one of your privileges. So almost like telling a little anecdote, but then you're not just going to leave it there. You're going to analyze it and um, and tell us like, what, what would happen if I had left this privilege unchecked? What would happen if I didn't discover this? What might the danger of holding this privilege and not being aware of it be? And I'm going to have uh, my own outline and my own sort of paper with my, uh, maybe with a example definition so that you guys know what this looks like. Because I know it's not a really straightforward paper. It's not just like, are you pro or con the death penalty? Um, college papers usually have a little more nuance. You're not asked to do one thing. You're asked to do like, four things. And what does that look like? Um, and so I have a little a little area of what does this look like broken down, where if you are already feeling overwhelmed, you can stick with this guy and, um, and know that you're covering everything. Um, and I just sort of guesstimated here, if you go over, that's fine. Um, this is four to five pages. If it's like super over that maybe think about what you put in there that isn't totally necessary but this part right here is what we're going to talk about on um on wednesday and a little bit more next monday as well of like great we have a paragraph what the hell does that look like because this area is where you can ensure that you are uh, this is how you can populate your paper. So there's nothing worse than just staring at a Word document that's blinking at you. Um, I always start with just these little sort of blocks, these supporting blocks. There's so much more um, like construction to writing than people think. And it all comes down to these elements. And this does not mean that you have to follow any kind of template. So if you're cringing and remembering horrible English classes where you had to fill out a template, this isn't that. I think of this more as, um, as a, as let's say, I'm trying to think of the right analogy here. I was going to say training wheels, but that you would have to use training wheels. Um, optional training wheels for you to install. Um, these are things that I make sure that I have in every one of my paragraphs, because if they don't, um, I'm not going to really have a great, uh, a great essay. So you can read through some of this um, on your own of what I'm looking for when I grade. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about audience to um, our reader is somebody completely unfamiliar with the stuff we've been reading, which means there's an active translation that we have here. We have to make sure that we are defining and explaining these texts for somebody who hasn't read them. I do have the sample paragraph template if you feel more comfortable um, working that way. So we will talk more about this um, on, on Wednesday. But to move back up here, um, you do not have to pick for this example something that is just about race. I, what's going on right now in our world is, uh, is, is oriented on race and it seems appropriate to, to talk about it, even though maybe you are already getting exhausted with that. But we should look at it. We should look at it and we should examine it. We should study it. Um, we should talk about it. Um, but you don't have to choose that. Um, there are so many other privileges, gender, education, immigration status, appearance, disability or ability, religion, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, family unit. If you're out to ask like, you know, country of origin or even like state of origin or just where you grew up, um, all of those are great. And so you can use your pre-writing assignments. Um, so especially I think last Friday's is going to be super helpful for you. You can literally cut and paste some of the stuff that you wrote about because this assignment is sort of born out of that that assignment. Um, you can use any of uh, anything from your DEJs. That's a great place to go to access quotes that you found interesting. Um, so all of our supporting assignments are all there to help us eventually when we start writing our papers. Um, so please read through. I sort of skimmed over some stuff. Please get back to me if you have any questions about this. Uh, understand that we're going to be sure to be taking this bit by bit and so between now and Wednesday you can start you know brainstorming but it's also not necessary from Wednesday um, through through Sunday is when we'll be doing most of our most of our work on the paper so that we can just revise it next week <laughs>